We are a nation of risers. Our focus is always looking forward. Growth and po progress are the mantra in politics, business, education, even in the church. That's no surprise. We have stature because our nation encompasses land that has phenomenal resources. And the people of our country are also phenomenal resources. That's, that's just how the world works and that's how our country is. I googled this week the words how to get a promotion and the result came back 139 million pages to search. That's how much of an advancing culture we are. We love stories of people who have risen above their station in America. As a matter of fact, 19th century novelist Horatio Alger Jr. made a name for himself writing novels about impoverished boys who made good choices and worked hard and became well-off examples of the American dream. Rising is sewn into our national DNA because in some ways those stories are very true. For example, look at the rich and famous today and see from whence they came. Jennifer Aniston, famous actress, began as a bike messenger. Jim Carrey worked as an overnight janitor. Cindy Crawford, the famous supermodel, her first job was shucking corn. And Jennifer Hudson, the famous singer, flipped burgers in a Chicago area Burger King. Dwayne The Rock Johnson worked as an overnight shift dishwasher before becoming the biggest actor and wrestler in the world. But if you're a Christian, you don't follow a riser. Jesus never got promoted. In fact, the Bible says that he got continually demoted. Philippians chapter 2 says, He was equal in the form of God, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. And our gospel reading today says that Jesus stooped even so low as to wash feet. And this is ground that we have covered before. We talk about this in worship a lot, but it's important enough to hear again that in the time of Jesus, one of the first acts of hospitality, if you were to go to someone's home, is that they would offer you a basin and towel for you to wash your feet. I presume that those feet would be tired and sore and dirty from having walked for a long ways. In some cases, a household slave, almost always a female slave, would have done this job as well. But it must be emphasized that never would have one free man wash the feet of another free man. No one would lower themselves that far. No teacher or rabbi of repute would lower themselves to that. But Jesus did. He took off his robe, washed their feet, and wiped them with his own clothing. Think for yourself uh, like a parent reaching out to find the only thing she has to offer to, to clean a smudge from her child's face, a portion of her clothing, maybe the, the hem of a, of a cuff or, or of a shirt. Happens all the time. But what Jesus does in this story is truly unthinkable in that culture. It's a sign of love that is so over the top that it can't be fathomed. It's a sign of utter devotion. You see, Jesus never gets promoted. He gets demoted for the sake of love. And we're here today to tell you that he loves you. And that he loves you in that same over-the-top way. And we've heard this story, the story of Jesus washing feet, so many times that we no longer realize how outlandish the story really is. One way for us to recognize how far over the top Jesus' love would be is to notice the reaction that Peter gives in the story. Peter says, no way you're washing my feet, because washing feet would make Jesus vulnerable. Having his feet washed by Jesus and exposed would make Peter vulnerable. As a matter of fact, the Latin word vulnus that is the root for our word vulnerable, actually means wound. To expose your feet for washing, or to have Jesus wash your feet, Peter, makes you woundable, <laughs> makes you vulnerable. And that might not cut it in a nation where everyone wants their stock to rise. Everyone wants to strive for greatness. I wonder what it means in a world full of people like Vladimir Putin. 
This is the point in our sermon yesterday where we had people actually sit down and take off their shoes for a minute before I finished up the sermon. Feel free to do so. And I'll tell you the story of Thomas Merton, famous Trappist monk from the early 20th century. And he wrote about monastic communities where monks would go forward on Ash Wednesday and receive the ashes barefooted. And he would say, going barefoot is a joyous thing. It is good to feel the floor and the earth under your feet. It is good when the whole church is silent, filled with the hush of people walking without shoes. And then Thomas Merton wrote, One wonders why we wear such things as shoes anywhere. Prayer is so much more meaningful without them. It would be good to take them off in church all the time. If you're like most people, it would feel strange for you to sit in a public place like church in public worship and have your shoes off. Because in worship, that's the place where we put on our best for God and where we put on our best for community every day that we show up there. We button up, we button down. But putting on our best can also cover up our pain, our loss, our brokenness. When Jesus invites Peter to take off his shoes, as I presume some people took them off yesterday in worship, he lays aside his power. Jesus demotes himself to servant, and he welcomes Peter into that vulnerable place along with him. Jesus washes feet as if to say, this is what love and authority and power look like in the kingdom of God, the kingdom that I am bringing into the world. Heck, it says that Jesus washed his disciples' feet with all of them there. We would presume that even Judas was still in the room at that moment. So that must be a statement that Christians, when they stand in militant opposition to evil, still do so with unthinkable, over-the-top love. So the story begins with Jesus lowering himself to this unthinkable depth of servant or slave. It continues through Peter's discomfort and vulnerability with that act. And John ends this interlude with Jesus declaring to all his followers that they themselves have been demoted. Now, how do you think that'll fly in a nation that's bent on making sure that everyone is a riser, that everyone is on their way to the top, that everyone is great and everyone is above average? It would be like going to a restaurant and seeing Dwayne the Rock Johnson washing dishes. <laughs> it would be like driving through Burger King and having Jennifer Hudson, the famous singer, serving you a Whopper at the drive through As much as we have heard this story over and over, it remains countercultural to the very end. Jesus goes over the top by lowering himself in love. And all of us are called to do the same. Many years ago, I attended a, a week-long Bible study with Dr. Harry Went at Crossways International in, uh, in Minneapolis. And all week long, Dr. Went came coming back to speak extensively about Jesus washing feet as an absolute expression of his love for his disciples, for the world. Back then, Crossways International actually sold shirts that said, We do feet! <laughs> Imagine if that were your church's motto, Celebration Lutheran Church. We do feet. Maybe then we could shake away our obsession with worldly greatness and see what it means to be truly great in the way of Christ. Maybe then Jesus' over-the-top love could shine through us. And remember, just when you thought this down-to-earth Messiah couldn't bring himself any lower, at the end of the story he took a cross and was buried in the earth for the sins of the world. So. Yesterday, what we did was we gave everyone a small gift to depart in worship and to remind them of Jesus' daily love for them, to be over-the-top servants, and that we are called to emulate his act of love by washing feet. And what we gave them was a small sticker that they could place somewhere in their home or in their life. And you can come to church and pick one up. We've got more here today. I put mine on the back of my phone because I have my phone in my hand so often. The sticker is two small feet with a heart in between to remind us to get low for one another as Jesus got low for us. And that will be represented in all of the servant life of the church. Every child that goes to camp, every hungry neighbor we feed, 
It will be found in every child who gets an education in Haiti through our mission of the month, every home we build for the homeless through Habitat for Humanity, every quilt, every refugee of war who we help. If you have a sticker like that from us, then you can look at it whenever you want to and maybe think to yourself, we're the church, we follow Jesus, we do feet. Amen.